Hi, good evening. Everybody ready? Hi, Jose Miguel, welcome. Hello, Carlos Ernesto. Hi, Raul. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. I think it's time to start, right? Hello, Nancy. Welcome. Okay, guys, are you ready to start? Don't see if you are, guys. Okay. Oh, okay, Carlos Eduardo. It's okay. Hi, Ulisse. We missed you yesterday. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Raul. Hi, Osman. Hi, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. I'm trying to get a link for you to start with. Um, <clears throat> Just one sec. I think this is the one. Yes, perfect. Good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. I am still waiting for people here. I see we are just a few. Okay, yeah. uh, we are going to start, guys. We are going to start. I think it is, um, I mean, five minutes after eight and in honor for, uh, to the punctual, okay, to the punctual people, we are going to start right now. Okay, the first thing we want to do is a feedback. Okay, we want to do a feedback, feedback, 
And what we want to say is that in the first class, we were talking about the product development process then we saw something extra and we were talking about how to present a product with the present perfect, right? Sentences in affirmative and in negative with the present perfect. And we saw some verbs in the past participle form. Um, my best advice is that you should get a verb list. I've got one, but this is, really, really basic, okay? And I usually manage it with, I mean, in a, in a word or in a text um, format because you can extend it, okay? The verbs that you are learning, then you are introducing them. So I will share this with you, even though it says, um, it says um, that it is a basic one, right? Okay. Allow me to go right there and get it for you. It's the same thing as always. I cannot share it. I will share it later, okay? <clears throat> I have this one. This is a really basic one. So I will give you this one. I think it will be possible to share it from here. Okay, there it is. So this is for you just to check the first, second, and third form of the verbs, okay? And now let's start the class by introducing it. And then we are going to make just a little feedback. Our topic for today will be how to use reduced adverb clauses of time, okay? So this is kind of a hard a topic, but we are going to try to do it easier. I mean, a very practical a topic. This is how to use reduced adverb clauses of time. So in order to see that, we need to know what is an adverb, right? What uh, is an adverb clause? And also uh, what is an adverb of time? And as you know, or as you may know, uh, adverbs of time are in a big amount, okay? There are a lot of adverb of time, adverbs of time and um, a, beside that, we have adverb clauses. So verbs of war that work as an adverb, as one adverb, but there are a lot of words together, like in a phrase, right? So the objective for this class is that we want to see this the adverbs 
classes of time reduced in different ways. But in the field or in the context of describing the application of each step of a SWOT analysis, okay? This is a SWOT analysis when assessing, I'm sorry, when assessing a new product idea. So we are in the same topic about marketing and all of that, okay? We are trying to continue with the product development process. So this is a part of it. We have to make these kind of analysis to um, put something new in the market, okay? To introduce something new in the market. And not only a product, maybe an idea of business. It's not only a tangible product, but an idea of business. Sometimes I think the teams are um, very worried about making money, but they try to put all this thing in the less time possible, right? But the first thing we have to do is to make an agenda, okay? To make an agenda. That's why we are going to see the adverbs uh, of time today because it's a process. So we need to know what goes after, what goes before, and what goes next, okay? What goes next. So the agenda for today is our feedback. Then we are going to talk about the SWOT vocabulary, and we are going to we are going to know what is that, how to use it, and some vocabulary. This is not a business class. This is an English class. So we are not going to go into the um, into the subject very deep, but we are going to try to communicate in this context, because this is a big context, okay? So let's um, let's start by saying what we were studying yesterday, okay? What we were studying yesterday was uh, they present perfect. So just remembering, this is a kind of feedback. Let's remember that we have the um, affirmative, negative, and also we can ask and answer questions with this structure. But what is the usage of these um, time, I mean, these tens of verbs? So allow me to go and show you just a little bit the timeline where we can place the present perfect, okay? We can place the present perfect in different uh, times during a timeline, okay? So we want to see something related to time, okay? Time. So this is the present perfect visualization or kind of grammar thing, okay? And we're going to say that the present perfect has different usages, okay? This is the kind of feedback from yesterday. We have the past, the present right now, and the future. Things can go on and can come back. Okay, so uh, things are going and coming and we are always starting new things. We are always talking about different things we made in the past. We are comparing uh, activities that we did in the past that maybe we are doing right now and that we will do in the future. But there are things that remain from the past and they continue to the present. There is no certain time 
It could be any time in the past to the present, okay? To the present. So if you see the timeline is that we can use the present perfect in three different actions. For example, if the action started and finished in the past, but in undetermined time, okay? In an undetermined time. And there is another action, like repeated actions in the past, often with quantity words. Ah, ¿Cómo vamos a diferenciar estas? With quantity words. For example, I have um, eaten, oh, I have studied um, that topic twice. When? And the term in, but twice. For example, if I say twice a year, oh, then I understand that you did it twice. But, but it means that we don't know if you did it in the beginning or at the end or in the middle of the year. We are just saying that that repeated action happened, okay? So let's see about this one. The action started in the past and continues to the present, okay? And continues to the present. So let's see some examples here. Here we've got some examples. I have checked all possible causes, right? The technician has replaced the batteries over and over. Aha, vemos entonces que el verbo have se va a conjugar de acuerdo al sujeto, ¿verdad? I have, you have, he has, she has, it has, we have, they have, okay? And, it, uh, and we have to be careful with the form of the verb we are using. Remember, we have regular verbs, irregular verbs. The regular end with ed. Let's say, I mean, let's consider that we need to um, care about the spelling rules and the pronunciation rules. So let's read the second one. The technician has replaced the batteries over and over. The leakings have damaged the washing machine. The plane has landed on time. The engine has started properly. Employees have reported the fault several times. A responsibility of employers have caused many accidents in the factory. The restaurant has closed the auxiliary kitchen. The auxiliary kitchen. His company has increased sales in no time. The labeling machine has stopped three times today. Okay, people. So please, I'm going to say a name. I mean, mm, okay, Hosman number one, Carlos num Carlos Ernesto number two. Eulise number three, Raul number four. Okay, may you may start reading. I have checked on possible case. Causes, causes. I have checked all. <laughs> I have checked causes. Causes. Causes, 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 causes. Causes. Okay. Cuando tenemos dos vocales juntas. Okay, la que va a sonar es la primera. La segunda, en este caso, no va a sonar. Entonces, sería como causes. Okay, causes, causes, causes. There you go. I have checked all possible causes. Cops. A ver, demos lejos más. I have checked all possible causes. Thank you. Continue, please, Carlos Ernesto. The technician has replaced the batteries over and over. Thank you. Continue, Liz. The, no. yeah. the liking you have damaged the washing, the washing machine. OK. Aquí tenemos otro ejemplo como lo que decíamos con causes. Miren. Aquí hay dos vocales juntas. Vamos a decir la primera, Lee, ¿ok? Porque es una letter E. Ok, so we are going to say the leakings. The, the leakings. leakings. 
How the damaged? How damaged. damaged the washing machine? The washing machine. Okay. Number four, please, Raúl. And the plane has landed on time. Very good, Raúl. Solo que en la letra D con la letra N sí la vamos a pronunciar. Landed. Uh, con la letra T, N, T, sí no la vamos a pronunciar la T, pero la D, sí. Vamos a decir landed. Ok, the plane has landed on time. Yes, thank you very much. So let's continue. Wilbur number five, Ana Lorena number six, Elwin number seven, Jose Salvador number eight. The engine, the engine, the engine has started properly. The engine has started properly. The engine, a ver, digámoslo, Wilbur. The, the engine, engine has the engine has Started, started, started properly. properly. Uh -huh. Si lo decimos con la T suave, también suena bien. Solo que recordemos que este es it. Entonces sería started. Started. Sin miedo, hay que decir este ed porque tenemos una T final acá, ¿verdad? Entonces, the engine has started okay. properly. A ver, the, otra vez, Wilbur. The engine has started properly. Yes. Continue, please, Hannah. Employees have reported the fault several, several times. Several. Ahí sería several. una E, sí. Several times. Several uh -huh. times. Thank you. Number seven, Mr. Edwin. Yes. The responsibility employer has caused many accidents in the factory. Okay, very good. So this is a responsibility, okay? A responsibility. Este está mal porque es E, it's letter I. A responsibility of employers has caused many accidents in the factory. Thank you very much, Edwin. Number eight. Mr. Jose, Salvador. Uh, we are not able to hear you. Maybe your sound or your audio is not working properly. I see you open your microphone, but we are not able to hear you. Si está con audífonos, desconecte el audífono y vuelva a conectar. He write on the chat. Did he? Okay. Let me check. Oh, all right. All right. I understand. So, Glenda, please, number eight. Number eight. Yes, please. The restaurant has closed the. The restaurant has closed the outdoor kitchen. Ok, aquí tenemos una S, entonces aquí nos va a sonar como una T. Entonces va a ser has closed. Has closed. Uh -huh. Vale, digamos lo completo, Glenda. The restaurant has closed the outdoor kitchen. Great, great. Ok, number nine, please, Rosa, and number ten, Cristina. His company has increased sales in no time. Mm -hmm. The leveling machine has stopped three times today. Okay. Aquí tenemos letra P. Suena como T aquí. Entonces sería stopped. Stopped. Okay. Stopped. Excellent. Yes, that's correct. So just remembering some of the verbs, okay? We use I, you, we, they with the form of the verb have, okay? This is the plural one and also for the first person and the second person in singular. It will be I, you, we, and they have learned. 
Are you we they have studied? Are you we they have been? He, she, it has. Has. This is the form of the uh, for the third person of the verb have. So we are going to say he has sent the emails, for example. She has had a headache for several days. Okay, it has verified the um, entry, for example. Okay, we are going to use I, you, we, they have, he, she, it has, and the past participle form of the verb. Okay, then. For the negative form, we have different um, forms to contract, okay? Because we are going to make this short in the spoken form, not for the written one, but for the spoken. Uh, in the written form, I think English is really formal when you write. So you're going to you, you are going to write this in a full form, like I have not learned anything. Okay, uh, you have not reported or reported the problem. But speaking, you can say, I've not learned anything. I haven't, I haven't, but the raw materials, for example. Okay, acá estamos enfatizando la negación. Here we are emphasizing the negation. And it's really important for us to say that that thing hasn't happened. So we emphasize not. I've not reported the problem before. I've not done my homework. I've not had time to do a um, extra a, or overtime, right? Overtime. So. We could say, we could say this in a softer way, okay? This is a softer way. Why softer? Uh, because sometimes when we are speaking, maybe we, we are just saying the thing and it is not to emphasize the negation. So we are going to say, I haven't learned, you haven't studied. Uh, and this are for the short questions. I mean, for the short answers, yes, no questions. Okay, esto fue lo que vimos el día de ayer. This is what we saw yesterday. And we'll see it in a different way today. So um, let's go back also, because we want to know some concepts. These are really important concepts that maybe yesterday we should see, but we couldn't because we were really um, busy with the present perfect. But now we are going to see. Remember that yesterday we were talking about the product line and the product development process. Okay, the product development process is a really large process. Maybe it's not so large, Maybe it's complex, okay? Because it can restart if there is a failure, remember? So let's think about companies around that they have different kind of products under one same brand. For example, we could say, we could say, for example, these products, yeah? And this is what we know as a product line. Usually when you have a product line, you should be attentive to the feedback from customers. What do they really need? When you provide it for fulfilling a need, maybe you need to fulfill a different one in a certain time, right? Because, uh, the customer discovers that the, uh, that the need was fulfilled, but maybe it was created a new one, okay? It was created a new one, or maybe there was a need that, a need that the team or the 
marketing team or a designers never thought about it, okay? They never thought about it. So they start to create new products and provide new products. So let's see, what is a product line? What is a product line? So here we have some mm, examples, right? Look at this brand. Mm -hmm. This is from Johnson & Johnson, I think. I really don't remember what's the real brand or the producer of these, but they the brand under all of these different flavors and formulas is Ensure, right? Ensure. And they come in different presentations, right? They come in the liquid form and they come in the powder form. So this is a product line. They have a variety of products under a specific brand. That's a product line. And let's imagine, let's imagine that Ensure uh, wants to introduce a new variety, a new flavor, for example. So they have to restart the process from the product development process to the new launching, right? They have to test the product. They have to do all the process again, okay? So they have to follow all, all the stages. What were the stages of the product development process? A ver, recordemos las stages. Storm brain. Brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Idea screening. Idea screening. Uh -huh. Target mark. Uh -huh. So we had the idea generation, the idea screening. Idea generation was the brainstorming. And it contains also the idea screening. It contains also the design of the idea, okay? And what about the other one? It was the concept development and testing, right? Concept development and testing. Then we have the business analysis. Business analysis yeah. Yes. And what was the next one? Product development. ¿Y en qué consistía esto de product development? A ver. Mm -hmm. And make the prototype. Correct. That's correct. To create a real product, okay? Maybe in a different scale, but it's the real product, okay? Tangible, or we mm, give a sample of the service, right? Then it comes the test marketing, test marketing, okay? Then what's the next? Commercialization. Uh, yes, exactly. And then? Launch. Launch, we launch the product, okay. So we are going to go where we were. Okay, and let's continue with the product line. Cuando una compañía quiere lanzar un nuevo producto es porque ha visto alguna necesidad de acuerdo a los feedback que va teniendo de sus clientes, ¿verdad? For example, um, the Dove line, okay, is not only for the hair, hair, it's for mm, beauty care, or maybe also for, um, well, they are beauty products, okay, they are beauty products, like soap, like um, the shampoo, conditioner, 
creams or body lotions, okay? They have different kind of products under the same brand that they are fulfilling different needs, okay? So a product line definition is this one, okay? Who wants to read this? Mr. Nelson Alberto, please read this definition. He wrote on, on the chat and he's still also? at work. Oh, because I'm charging my phone. That is why I didn't realize. Okay, thank you very much. Mm, okay. Mm, there are a lot of people with difficulties today. Oh, guys. All right, let's see. A quienes tengo presentes, levantenme la mano, pónganse bien bonitos ahí, peinense y ah, enciendan la cámara. <ríe> Vamos a ver, por favor. A ver, hoy sí ya los tengo por acá. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Ok, now I see. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ok, Cristina, could you please read this definition? Repeat. Uh, could you please read the, this definition? Thank you. Uh, product line is a uh, variety. variety Go -go. Of, Ajá. Usted of, no se detenga. Para leer, usted dele con todo, sin miedo, aunque se tropiece, se levane, no importa, ¿ok? Después corregimos <laughs> lo que esté mal, ¿sí? Va. Vamos, okay. Si no, no va a avanzar cuando va leyendo y va a decir, ah, ah no, vamos, con todo. Ok. A product line is a variety of different items, no be the same brand and distribute, distributed, be the same manufacturer. Thank you very much, Christina. You did a really good job. That's the way of reading, okay? And we're going to see now the way to pronounce some words. For example, this one, variety, variety, okay, variety variety okay a product line is a variety of different items 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 known known by esta palabra es by meaning by the same brand and distributed by the same manufacturer okay Carlos Ernesto, please read this definition. Se me oye. Yes, yes, we are able to hear you. A product line is a variety of different items known by the same brand and distributed by the same manufacturer. Great, very good. Please, Josman, uh, could you please read it? A product line is a variety of different items, not by the same brand and distributed by the same manufacturer. Okay, great. Thank you very much. A veces es un poco difícil para uno cuando está aprendiendo y lo comprendo perfectamente. Por eso vuelvo y repito a lo que hicimos ayer. Ayer ustedes quedaron así pensando, híjole, esta teacher cuatro veces quiere que digamos la misma, la misma pregunta. Y por último, en la última, ¿verdad? Que tampoco le salía. Entonces, si a la décima no sale, la hicimos. Pero hay que repetir, esto de eso se trata. ¿Cómo aprendió usted cuando era un bebé? ¿Cómo le decía la mamá? Mamá, mam, decía usted. ¿Sí? Mamá, todos los días, a cada rato, no era cuestión de que ah, hoy le digo y a mañana ya no le digo. No, la mamá quería que le dijera mamá, ¿sí? Entonces sí empezó, mamá, mam. Entonces igual acá, si no repetimos, 
se nos va a olvidar, ¿ok? Así que vamos a ver, esto es para todos, esto es para todos, vamos a ver. Entonces, lo que estamos viendo ahorita es la definición de este concepto. Product line. Product line. It's not only one product. It's a group of products. Okay? Maybe they, um, they I mean, the companies have created different um products because they see the necessity in the market, okay? They want to make more profits too, okay? They want to have more profits, but to have more profits, they have to give a promise and they have to accomplish a promise. So if they give you a promise and create new products, They have to do it under the same brand for us to buy it because the prestige of that brand is the one that sells, right? So let's see. A product line is a variety of different items known by the same brand and distributed by the same manufacturer. No quiero traducir, pero podemos traducir de esta manera, ¿sí? Podemos decir que la línea de productos que se crea, ¿verdad? O se ofrece, es una variedad. ¿Pero de qué? Different kind of items, ¿ok? Different items. Como decíamos, puede ser un complement, puede ser un complemento, ¿ya? Yeah? Like shampoo, soap, and body lotion, ¿ok? And the splash, ¿ok? It's a line, For example, Bath and Body, it's a brand that they offer the complete line under the same brand and under the same fragrance. Oh, that's wow. And they sell for that because women and people want to have everything in the same fragrance and their favorite fragrance, the fragrance that makes people, I mean, the, yeah, the fragrance that makes people feel better, okay, with health, with energy, and they feel pretty with those fragrances, right? Okay, then that's a product line. They have different items, complementary, okay, complementary items. And it's the same manufacturer, it's the same manufacturer. Entonces quiere decir que una tienda, la tiendita de la niña Mercedes, ¿verdad que ella no tiene un product line de ella? Aunque ella tiene una variedad, le ofrece una variedad de productos, ¿sí? They offer, she offers a variety of products, but it's not a product line, okay? The product line es como Diana, ¿verdad? Los churritos, ¿ya? Yeah? Churritos Diana. What is the variety? Okay, tell me. Quesitos, churritos, okay, tostecas, and also candies, yeah, candies, like las cerecitas, right? Okay, they offer different products under the same brand. That's product line. Okay. So let's go and see this. Ah, uh, this is not the one I want to see first. Vámonos de regreso al product development process. Acordémonos de esto. Que tenemos que hacer el match de estas definiciones. ¿Ok? Vamos a ver. ¿Quién quiere pasar al pizarrón? Who wants to come into the board? Uh -huh. Solo uno, por favor. No se me amontonen. No, no puede usted. Solamente le voy a pedir a... Ver, permítanme. Ay, me disculpa. Para la próxima pasa usted, ¿verdad? Pero ahorita va a pasar... Vamos a ver. Blanca Jennifer, ¿cree que puede pasar usted? A mí no me queda muy bien. Que como que... Como es con el teléfono. Ah, ok. ¿Alguien que pueda pasar en la compu si quieren? Aunque también con el lapicito se puede, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. 
I can. Okay, please, go ahead. Thank you very much. A ver, todos le van a ayudar a Nancy, okay? Everybody's going to help. Let's read and then we match. Go ahead. Okay, the first one says business analysis. Mm, and the stage once the product has been approved, it will be taken to massively reproduce. Mm, I don't think so. It presents the model product to be appreciated as a whole by the potential customer. Mm -hmm. Maybe the 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 first one I said is this marketing, but I don't know. <laughs> hey guys, Once please, everybody, give your opinions. Approved. Maybe I carefully designed it. Plan is important to make sure about the acceptance of the product. Which one? I think that I step what what I'm saying that having ideas we just getting maybe up to. Oh, I don't understand. Um, the first one is business analysis, and uh, which one of of this of the options number five maybe this one yeah, um, number two <clears throat> it is stage research Wait. business analysis Business analysis, this step guarantees that failing ideas be discarded immediately. Maybe. I yes. think that is the idea screening. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, which one? A carefully designed or what? This is this step guarantees that finding ideas be discarded immediately. Oh. <clears throat> I think it is idea screening. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight, idea screening. This step guarantees that failing ideas be discarded immediately. Yes. Okay. Brainstorming is idea generation, obviously. Yeah. Mm, launch. Mm, it will be the last, maybe. The last one. Or Once the, is been... the last one. Mm -hmm. Once the, the, the idea has been complete. Launch. Launch. Okay. Um, that's marketing. Is the you, have, one. you have yes. uh, to ask for that customer. Yes. Launch, maybe. Uh, once the product has been approved, will be taken but I put the... in the last one. Mm. Mm. Product yeah. development, it could be mm -mm -mm. the stage research has to be conducted in order to be sure that the product will be accepted. Mm. I think the number eight is wrong because in the testing you can uh, you can fall in the ideas and be this discarded immediately. Okay. 
yeah you you you're using the the testing for testing any products and um let me see how can i say Wow, well, the the testing is for uh, I forgot the idea. <laughs> <laughs> but sure, the number... the está apagado. Okay, is the yes. number the number eight? No, the number six is the it's Number seven, maybe uh, number three wants the products. This is the guarantees that falling ideas with this camera. Number three, maybe is uh -huh, seven. This mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Number three is seven. Okay. I have to erase this one. No, that's correct, I think. Yes, it's correct in this place. Mm -hmm. um, commercialization. Yeah. But what about the business analysis? Because the business analysis is the costs, right? The costs, I and if it is feasible, right? So if it is factible, then we are going to uh, have the results from the business analysis. So um, I think it's not this the step that guarantees the failing ideas are discarded. What do you think, guys? This is number eight. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. This is number eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about the business analysis, guys? It present Maybe, model uh, product to be appreciated as a whole by the potential <laughs> customer. Okay. Maybe well. a carefully designed. I think they say a carefully designed plan is important to make sure about the acceptance of the product uh -huh, uh -huh. for Maybe business analysis. Uh-huh. The, uh -huh. the, yeah. the number six is in the stage research has to be conducted in order to be sure that the product will be accepted. Product development. Uh, uh -huh. Maybe in this stage, the research has to be conducted in order to be sure that the product will be accepted. Maybe, I don't know. Number five, maybe. Um, I think or maybe product development is presents a model product to be mm -hmm. appreciated as a whole by the potential customer. Yes. Product develop is yes. Present the model. Mm -hmm. And the last one is six. Six. Yes, there you go. Even though this is uh, the test marketing and also the concept development and testing, right? Remember, these are two kind of tests. This is the test of the product and its functions and if it is really fulfilling the, the need and if it works properly. But this is the test that you do, for example, uh, targeting your market or um, doing a marketing res research, like segmenting the market for you, right? So they are different 
kind of testings. It's not only the product, but also the marketing, right? Or the market. So yes, that's correct. I think that's the order and it is okay, guys. It is okay. Um, we're going to continue. Is there any questions so far? Is there any questions so far? Teacher, when uh, the companies uh, make a focus group is in the second step or in the sixth? No, because, okay, this is the situation. When you develop a product, okay, after you launch, uh, I mean, uh, when you are going to launch the product, before that, you have to test the market. The market is the people, so is the focus group, okay? So test marketing, yeah? Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, are we okay so far? Díganme, por favor, porque si no, no paso. A ver, cuéntenme, vamos bien? Are we okay so far? Me yes, pueden okay. responder, so far, so good. So good. So okay. good. So far, so, so good. So far, so good. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I will stop sharing and let's go and check this. Okay, when we talk about a company and uh, developing a new product, we are going to see situations like the one we saw yesterday. There was this family business, remember the Papa's something restaurant? Okay, the Papa's burger or Papa's something. So uh, they were trying to develop a new sandwich. Do you remember? And they were um, trying to, I'm sorry, they were trying to um, see if it was a good idea or if it was not a good idea. Well, if it was a good idea, it was responsibility of the one who had the idea, come up with the idea, right? But do you think that's correct? Do you think that's correct in a company that only one takes all the responsibility? Obviously not, right? Obviously not. Is in a teamwork that we have to do all the work, okay, is a teamwork. That is why it's really important to agree and stick to the idea, okay? It's really important to stick to the plan. If you uh, don't agree with the plan, maybe you are not going to uh, provide anything to this process, okay? And maybe you are going to subtract instead of give more, okay? So let's go and check something. Cuando hablamos de un proceso, hablamos de time, ¿verdad? Hablamos de time. Every stage is time. So we're going to our manuals and let's go to our manuals to see something very important because I want to ask you a question, okay? I want to ask you a question. <clears throat> when is the best time to develop a new product? When is the best time to develop a new product. The, it depends of the kind to the product because uh, uh, some product maybe is more, the sales increase at uh, the start of the years or the, the last month. Okay. Also, when we want to reroute or we want to correct 
the path that our company is taking with one product, maybe the star product is falling or decreasing, okay? And the profits that we are getting from that uh, product may be for any other factor, maybe competitors, right? Maybe new prices, right? Maybe um, uh, when companies or distributors from other companies but from foreign countries bring new products, when they import new products and they make that the market goes down, it could be a very good time, right? So to see all of this, competitors, prices, and all the behavior of our profits or our incomes and outcomes with a product that we sell or an, a service that we offer, then we need to analyze and we need to see what is going on. If is there a problem or if is there something that it is affecting my profits or the development of my product in the market? Okay, then that is why they exist some tools that we can take advantage of. So we're going to see this today. We want to see the SWOT analysis okay this is a tool it's an um it's an analysis that we also make uh for ourselves we do it every time we are evaluating if we are strong in some things or if we are weak in some other things and we are trying to reinforce all the weak areas that we have or the weak areas that our product has. So let's see, what is a SWOT analysis? Do you know what is a SWOT analysis? Yes. Okay, what is a SWOT analysis? SWOT is like uh, um, the study about the improve the, the company, for example, in Spanish, it's like a foda. Exactly. So in English, yeah, the letter S is a stand for for strength. Strength. Letter the strength, and the letter W is like a weakness. Is the 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 things that we know to improve or to change for something better. The letter O is for opportunities. And letter T, threat. Threat, okay, correct. Thank you very much, Glenda. Okay, we have to conduct an analysis of this kind when, at, well, we have to do it permanently in our companies because per, or periodically we have to see what is going on well or what is failing, okay? So we need to detect the problems on the way to correct them maybe before they happen, okay? To correct the route before the things, the bad things happen. Okay, let's read this conversation to understand just a little bit what's a SWOT analysis. And this analysis give, uh, gives us the time, the right time to develop a new product or to uh, create a new branch to open different, uh, to open our company to a different market, okay? So this is the analysis that is going to help us to place our company in a different place, the place that we want to get, okay? So let's see, Mr. Rivas, Mario, and Jose are talking. So they say, well, they are in a meeting. This is, uh, we're going to read the instructions for you to, to put this in context, okay? And it says, Speech Masters, that's the company. Speech Masters is planning to open a new branch. Mr. Rivas, the general manager, is meeting with a team to run a SWAT. This analysis, right? On the new 
project. Okay, so this is a project. Maybe there is no product, maybe there is not something established, but they have an idea. What is the idea? A new branch, okay? A new branch. All right. Well, let's get started. After conducting a SWOT analysis, we will know whether to go on or stop with this project. Right. Let's describe the strengths. That means the advantages we have over our competitors. We offer flexible schedule to, schedules to adapt to our customers' busy agendas. Besides, we allow them to practice their public speaking skills since the first class. That's correct, Maria. After discussing our strengths, let's continue with our weaknesses. What are weaknesses about? Weaknesses are areas in which the corporations are compet competi I'm sorry, competitively disadvantaged. In our case, a uh, weakness might be the lack of parking space for our customers. You're right again, Mario. Before making a decision, we still need to go over the opportunities and threats or dangers outside that could affect the company. Okay, so let's read this 30 seconds. Everybody reading the conversation for 30 seconds. Quiero verlos, mover los labios cuando los estén leyendo. 30 segundos para leerlo, 30 seconds to read it. I want to see your lips moving. Is there any question about the vocabulary in the conversation? All clear. It is not easy. <laughs> yeah, it is not. What mean besides? Besides, además. Okay. Uh, what is the correct pronunciation for competitors? Uh, competitors, competitors. Uh -huh. Y esta palabra, miren, he ensayado y ensayado y practicado y siempre me trago. Competitively, competitively, competitively. Y el otro es competitors, competitors. ¿Dónde está competitors? Here, here. Competitors. Uh, but weak, uh, weaknesses. Uh -huh. Correct. Okay. Yes, weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So this is plural because one is weakness. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any other question? Okay, then I will stop sharing just for a moment and please everybody turn your camera on. Breathe in and breathe out. And I'm going to take the attendance. I'm going to call the roll, but 
we are going to do this, okay? We are going to, to, to do this. You are going to tell me what have you done one hour ago, okay? One hour ago since you came home, okay? That's what you're going to tell me. I have something, something, okay? There you go. Cuando yo diga su nombre, usted me va a decir, desde que llegó a la casa, ¿qué ha hecho? Okay? Uh, two things, okay? There you go. I have had dinner. I have cooked my dinner, whatever you want to say. Remember, present perfect. Ana Lorena Lovatoriana. I have taken my dinner. And I have a, eaten my dinner. <laughs> okay, remember past participle. Okay, yeah. past participle. I have. Uh huh. Eaten. Yeah, but you have to say it correctly. Mm, right? Eaten. 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 Uh -huh. eaten. Exactly. My because dinner. I heard like eating, eating. Okay, oh. but that's not correct. Porque eating sería el ing, la pronunciación del ing. Entonces, dígalo, aunque, ¿sabe qué? A veces nosotros eh, no sabemos la pronunciación, pero está escrito ahí, ¿verdad? Entonces, hay que, o, o por lo menos en nuestra mente sabemos cómo se escribe. Hay que pronunciarlo tal como está, como lo leyéramos, ¿sí? Eaten, ¿ya? Yeah? Instead of eating, ¿ya? Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, that's why. Thank you very much, Ana. You did a good job. Okay, let's continue. Blanca Jennifer Torres de Martinez. I have cooked my dinner and I eaten. Okay, I have cooked. 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 Yeah, there you go. Thank you very much, Blanca. Uh, Carlos Alberto Dominguez Martinez. I have I washed the, my car. Okay, I have washed. Okay, Watch. I have washed my car. Very good. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Carlos Eduardo Torres Duran. Mr. Carlos Eduardo. Carlos Ernesto Torres Cepeda. Carlos Ernesto. Uh -huh. Yes, please. Carlos Ernesto. Uh, uh, I have. Taking shower, uh, then uh, how eat, eating? Eaten, eaten. Eaten. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, I have sent email. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, very okay. good. Yeah, you did a lot of things, right? You have okay. done a lot of things. Uh, let's see, Cristina Edith Ramos Rios. Okay, I have to cook dinner. I, I was with my son for a moment. <laughs> and connect class. Okay, great, you used different structures, very good. But I needed you to use the present perfect, okay? Have to es una excelente forma de decir tengo que, ¿verdad? Yo tengo que, pero el have que estamos utilizando es el yo he, okay? Es un poquito diferente el significado, ¿verdad? Entonces, por ejemplo, uh, I have been with my son, for example, yeah? I have been with my son, yeah? I have cooked the dinner. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Cristina. Edwin Antonio Quintero Sumaña. 
Yes. Uh, so I have taken a shower after workout. And right. I have eaten my dinner and I have turned on my computer to have a class. Okay, great. Very good. Mm -hmm. Eulice Torres Torres. Mr. Eulice se nos fue. Fátima Noemi Umaña Castro. Ah, sí, sí, tenemos una gran lista, ¿verdad? En el WhatsApp. I forget, I always forget that. No, pero no tengo ellas. Vamos a ver. Glenda Josefina Toledo Leiva. Um, in the evening, I have taken the shower and then I rest a little moment. Then I have prepared it, my dinner and eat it. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Glenda. Jose Salvador Bernal. I have rested and I have seen TV. Great. Osman Atilio Serrano. I have uh, eaten the diner and watched the television one moment. All right. Thank you very much. Karen Lisette Santos, uh, perdón, Sanchez Castro. Ah, she was uh, as a listener today again. All right. Nancy Margarita Moran Moran. Miss Nancy. I have brought my sister from college. Yes, I'm talking. <laughs> great, great, great. I have brought my sister from college and I prepared my clothes for tomorrow. Great. There you go. Uh, Rafael Alexander Serna Diaz. Me? Wow. No, me. And me? Yes, you're right. I skipped your name. I'm sorry, Nelson. <laughs> Just give me one second, Rafael. Yes, yes. Nelson. No problem. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sorry, Rafa. <laughs> um, I, I've eaten an apple and I, I've drunk a Gatorade. All right, good. Rafael Alexander Serna Diaz. Uh, I bought a medicine and I bought myself a drink. Oh, okay, great. Raul Ernesto Gonzalez. Uh, let me see. <laughs> I up early. Today to go to, to do a, a blood test. A, 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 a blood test, all right. Mm -hmm. Only okay. Ah, oh, all right, <laughs> no problem. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, I was waiting for something else. I don't know why. Okay, uh, Rosa del Carmen Enriquez Flores. Miss Rosa? Wilber Alberto Perez Mendez? I had been watching TV while I was eating. Okay, thank you. And Jose Miguel Torres Hernandez? Hi. Um, I have worked on a meeting for tomorrow. I have been listening to class. 
and I have a fault with my camera. Oh, okay. Well, so sorry to hear that, but okay. Thank you very much. So let's continue, guys, and let's go to the break room just to practice the conversation, okay? We are going to practice only once. It doesn't matter if we don't switch roles, so you come back, okay? When you finish your, your only once, okay? Oh, we've got some, okay, I will create them and I will change, make the changes in the progress. Eh, teacher, a mí me sacó de, de la sala directa. Um, es que había una eh, actualización disponible. No sé si, si la hizo, la actualización de Zoom. Probablemente por eso es que le esté dando problemas. Permítame, ahorita lo voy a reubicar. Ok, lo voy a asignar a el, la sala 10, ok, room 10. Let's describe the string that means the advantages we have over your competitors. And we offer flexible schedule to adapt our customers' busy agendas. Besides, we allow them practice their public speaking skills in the first class. That's correct, Mario. After discussing our strengths, let's continue with our weaknesses. What are weaknesses about? Weaknesses are areas, areas in which the corporation are 
repeatedly disadvantages. In our case, a weakness might be the lack of parking space for our customers. You're right again, Mario. Before making a decision, we still need to go over the opportunities and threat or dangers outside that could affect the company. Está medio trabada, ¿vale? <laughs> sí, más la palabra. Do you feel it? Yes. Yes. Uh, How come? What is, what is the mean lack of? Lack of significa falta de. Ah, falta de. Uh, falta de. Okay. Yeah. Y, mm -hmm. uh, how do you say the disadvantage? Disadvantages. 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 Yes. Okay. Porque ventaja sería advantages. Advantage. Ah, so solo le agrega el dis. Exactly. Disadvantages. Mm -hmm. Advantages. Yes. Mm -hmm. Y, y la otra es com, competitively. Yeah, competitively. Yeah, so, competitively. Ah, la fuerza la lleva en la E. Hey, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Com competitively. Competitively. Yes. Okay, people, let's go back to the main session. We are going to continue there, okay? Okay. okay. Let's go. Uh, okay. How do you feel this conversation? Tell me. Good. Easy. Complicated. Was it easy? Yes, teacher. Was it a challenge? Okay, this is the way that we are going to learn what things are, giving definitions, definitions in English, okay? Usually we want to translate everything, but what we have to do to in order to achieve new vocabulary is defining or looking for the definitions or concepts in English, okay? So this is what we are doing right now. We are defining what is the SWOT analysis, okay? It has four letters, S-W-O-T. In the conversations, they talk about the strength, strength, mm -hmm. opportunities, right? Ah, actually, weakness, weaknesses. Okay, in plural, weaknesses. The letter O, opportunities, opportunities. N, threats, threats, yeah? Okay, then, uh, they are defining these things over there and the vocabulary they are using is right as if it was as a concept from a dictionary. That is why you feel it like that. So let's go back to that conversation and let's think about that, yeah? Because there we have some phrases we need to study today. 
There are some phrases there. ¿Cómo marcan el tiempo en que empieza una cosa y termina una cosa? A ver. It says, let's get started. Ah, so they are starting. What? The meeting, right? Not the process. The meeting, okay? So it says, after conducting a SWOT analysis. Ah, so it means that he is telling the purposes, the purposes of the SWOT analysis. What are the purposes? To know? What are the purposes here? Yes, Mm -hmm. I have a question. In, in this me. case, in mm -hmm. this case, this word is like a uh, if. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. But we have two options. So whether to go on or stop. So we are, we have two options. Mm -hmm. Yes. In uh, well, if, if for example, in the sentence, uh, they should put. Uh, if uh, in embed the embed the weather in this sentence, yeah. Uh, if you can substitute the if, well, you have to use a different way to say it. For example, you could say, "We will know if we can continue, or we have to stop." So we have to change it. Yeah, it's not uh, if to go. Mm, doesn't sound. Properly, yeah, properly. But uh, you can use it maybe in uh, if you don't know how to use weather, but now you are learning how to use weather, okay? Yeah. So okay. weather, nice. you have two options. You say weather this or this, okay? You have two, weather okay. this or this, yeah? And if you say yeah. if, if, okay? If this happened, this happened. Kind of okay. different. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. So uh, we were talking about the purposes of a SWOT analysis. What are the purposes of a SWOT analysis? Mm -hmm. To go on, so to continue, or to, to stop with the project. Okay. Those are the purposes after they conduct this um this analysis those are the purposes to conduct the SWOT analysis okay then so let's think about what they are talking about it says well after discussing our strengths ah so the first one is strengths after discussing our strengths mm -hmm, we are going to think about the weaknesses okay they have already discussed the strengths. Let's see what are their strengths. What are their strengths? One, two. Mm -hmm. The first trend, flexible schedule. Yes, correct. Thank you, Jose Miguel. And what's the next one? To practice their public speaking skills. Since? Since the first class. All right. So that's their advantage over the competitors. Maybe the other competitors um, uh, don't allow their students to start with practice. Maybe they start with theory. Then we would say, that's correct, Mario. That's his opinion, right? That's his analysis. So after Mario gave this friends uh-huh what does it say mr uh, what does mr rivas say let's continue with our weaknesses, our weaknesses. pero miren qué es lo que necesitamos para marcar el espacio de pasar de un lugar de un momento a otro momento ajá uh -huh. qué dice acá after discussing 
discussing, ¿ok? Las que están marcadas en negrita, ¿ok? Son eh, frases adverbiales, son unas cláusulas, ¿sí? Estas son cláusulas que usan un adverbio. Estas nos sirven para marcar el tiempo en que termina una fase y pasamos a otra fase, ¿ok? Marcamos el inicio, marcamos el final de algo. That's why we need to know how to use the adverbs. Adverbs are of different kinds. We have adverbs of time, adverbs of frequency, of adverbs of relation, adverbs of manner. Okay, we have different kind of adverbs. And we have different kind of adverb clauses. Entonces, ¿qué será una adverb clause? A ver. What is an adverb clause? Do you know? That has some words to connect uh, other ideas. Connectors, okay, yeah. In some cases, these adverbs connect. Connect in time, yes. Connect in time, placing in time the ideas. Okay, then, so let's see. What is, what is a adverb clause? Because we need to know. An adverb, we know that is a word that uh, expresses time and it expresses uh, when, why, how, and where. So those are, are, that are, I mean, those are adverbs. So let's see what is an adverb clause. What is an adverb clause? Aha. We're going to say that an adverb clause is a phrase. It's a phrase containing, containing, a subject and a verb, okay? They contain a subject and a verb, okay? If they contain a subject and a verb, isn't that a sentence? Yes, is a sentence, but it doesn't have a meaning by itself, okay? It doesn't have a meaning by itself. If it goes along, there is something missing. There is something that has to complete this idea. It's not a complete idea. It's a part of an idea. That is why it's a clause. It's not exactly a sentence, okay? So it says, it's a phrase containing a subject and a verb. It answers typical questions like when, why, how, and where. So an adverb clause, it's a group of words that function as an adverb in a sentence. It means that we have a series of words that have a meaning, but incomplete meaning. They need the other part, okay? Necesitan una parte que nos va a dar el significado completo de la idea. Por eso hablamos de las dependientes e independientes, ¿verdad? Una de estas, esta sería una dependiente de, ¿ok? Esta depende del significado que da la otra oración. Pero, ¿qué es lo que queremos ver? What do we want to see? The adverb, adverb, time markers, ¿ok? Time markers. To say the starting of an action and the end of that action and passing over to the next action. That's what we want to see, okay? So let's continue with this. And let's think about the adverbs of time that we know. What adverbs of time do we know? Aha, we know before, after, while, since, okay? Before, after, while, since. There are a lot, okay? There are a lot. These are the most common. But we are going to say that we usually say before and after, 
that's the most common, okay? While is at the same time that two actions are happening, okay? At the same time, two actions are a happening, okay? Occurring, two actions. While this, someone this. While this, something this, okay? And since it's the beginning, it marks the beginning, okay? Maybe it hasn't, it, it hasn't finished yet, okay? Since that time to this time, this thing has happened. Okay, then let's continue. Let's continue because we want to see something in the manual. In the manual, we have a letter of grammar that we want to read. But this is, in a summary, what these letters say, okay? Lo que acabamos de ver es en resumen lo que dice toda esta página de el manual, okay? Vamos a verlo y vamos a hacer esos ejercicios. We want to do these exercises. ¿Por qué? Porque lo que queremos es reducir esas adverb clauses, okay? quitando el sujeto o, y poniendo un ING y vamos a ver esta estructura para hacer más fluida la comunicación, ¿ok? To make the, the communication more fluent. So we are going to see this. In the manual, let's go to page, to the next page where we were, right? We were in the page 19, no. Page 14, page 14. So let's go to page 15. Yeah, let's go to page 15. Tomorrow we are going to do that pair work. But let's see this because it's really important to use the reduced adverb clauses of time. And we are going to see in this box, a lot of examples and the way to reduce these adverb clauses. This is kind of grammar class. Okay, this is a kind of a grammar class. So let's read. Other clauses introduced by before, after, since, and while can be reduced to modifying other phrases. Okay. Vamos a ver entonces una adverb clause, okay, en la conversación que acabamos de ver, que estaba en negrita, ¿se recuerdan? Is after we conduct a SWOT analysis, after we conduct a SWOT analysis, mm, okay, we will know whether to go on or stop with this project. The other phrase, or the, um, aquí falta una R, okay, other phrase eh, is all this phrase complete. After, tenemos un subject y tenemos un verb, miren. Tenemos un subject, tenemos un verb. Pero en la conversación vimos que decía after conducting. Ahí ya está reducida. Ok, it's reduced. ¿Cómo la reducimos? Ah, veamos por acá. To reduce an adverb clause to a phrase, we have to do this. First, eliminate the subject. That's the first thing we are going to do. And then we... It depends. If the clause has the form of the verb be, you have to eliminate it. For example, any kind, any form of the verb be. Um, is, are, was, where, been, okay? Any form. If the clause has a form of the verb be, eliminate it. If the clause has any other verb different from be, we have to add ING. Veamos cómo funcionaría entonces. The reduction is only possible when the subjects of the adverb clause and the independent clause are the same. Esa es la condición. La única condición para convertir esta cláusula adverbial en una frase adverbial va a ser que Tengamos el mismo sujeto en una y el mismo sujeto hace la otra acción. Porque si no, creamos confusión, ¿ok? Creamos confusión. Después vamos a decir, ajá, after conducting a SWOT analysis, 
porque es we, ¿verdad? After conducting a SWOT analysis, we will know. Ah, entonces se sobreentiende que el primer subject era we. Ahora, ¿qué tal si este no era? No era we, era I, por ejemplo. Entonces yo le voy a decir, sí, after conducting a SWOT analysis, but by me, okay? It's important that I did it. So we are going to create that confusion. Okay, then let's continue and let's see. Uh, before we make a decision, esta es la segunda cláusula que estaba allá. Before we make a decision, esta es una completa. Miren, tenemos el subject, tenemos el verb y tenemos el complemento, ¿verdad? En algunos casos va a haber complemento, en algunos casos no. Pero hay otras que no se van a poder hacer. Ya lo vamos a ir viendo. Aprendamos que una cláusula adverbial está compuesta por alguien que hace la acción y la acción. En cualquier, en cualquier tiempo verbal, ¿ok? En cualquier tiempo verbal, no solo en presente. Entonces, decimos, after we make a decision, we still need to go over the opportunities and threats that could affect the company. Entonces, ¿qué hacemos? El verbo no es be, ¿verdad? Entonces, le voy a poner un ing. Y al sujeto, ¿qué voy a hacer? Lo voy a eliminar. Y ya tengo, before making a decision, ya lo convertí en una frase adverbial, ¿ok? Que me está marcando el tiempo, ¿verdad? De esa acción. Ok, el tiempo de esa acción, de esta y de esta, porque son dos acciones que estamos uniendo, ¿verdad? Vaya, vamos a ver acá, dice, before the new product project gets a green light, we still need to beat the threats from outside. Ajá, entonces, veamos, ¿cuál es el sujeto acá? ¿Cuál es el sujeto? We. The new product. No, en esta, en la número tres. Ajá. The new project. The new project. project. Hasta project, ¿verdad? Ajá. The new product project. Ese sería todo eso el sujeto. I eliminate that. Ok. Y aquí es el ejemplo de las confusiones. Perdón que esto se me está cayendo porque este es más grande. Vaya, vamos a ver. Dice. The new pro, uh, product project. Ajá. Pero ¿quién necesita establecer o vencer las uh, amenazas de afuera? ¿Quién las necesita vencer? Los El producto. Exactly. Really? So we have different subjects. subjects. Tenemos, yes. Entonces no podemos poner before getting a green light. Porque no soy yo el que estoy recibiendo la, la aprobación. ¿Quién está recibiendo la, la aprobación? El proyecto. Entonces, ahí se crea la confusión. Así. Por ejemplo, decimos, before getting a green light, we still need to beat the threats from outside. Who is getting the green light? We? O, uh, are, are we getting the green light? Or is the project getting the green light? Ahí se crea la confusión. No podemos eliminarlo, ¿ya? Esa no la podemos reducir. Se queda tal como está porque los dos sujetos son distintos. Entonces, venimos. The subjects in the adverb clause and, and, and in the independent clause are different. So, the reduction should not be done. Entonces, veamos estos ejemplos que tenemos por acá para poder hacerlos, ¿sí? Vamos a ver. Tenemos que detectar cuál es el sujeto primero. What's the subject first? ¿Ok? After the product development team finished brainstorming, uh -huh. entonces la que lleva after, esa es la eh, clause, ¿verdad? Es la adverbial clause, porque ahí está el adverbio. ¿Tiene sujeto? Sí, tiene sujeto. ¿Quién es el sujeto? The product development team. The product development team. Sí, ok. A ver, viene acá y dice, it is essential to discard ideas that are not feasible. Ok. En este caso, it is... It's the same. Exactly, exactly. Ok, pero también podríamos decir que aquí tenemos que realmente no es el equipo, ¿ya? Yeah? No es el equipo. Sin embargo, es el equipo es el que descarta, ¿verdad? El equipo es el que descarta las ideas. Veamos cómo queda. 
¿ok? Veamos cómo queda para estar seguros y probemos, ¿sí? Entonces dice, after the product development team, elimino product, ahí, lo elimino, y digo, after, ¿qué sería acá? Finishing. finishing. Ok, after finishing, brainstorming, it is essential to discard ideas that are not feasible. Suena bien, ¿verdad? No hay confusión, ¿sí o no? No hay confusión. ¿Quién descarta? El equipo. Ok, then you can do it, right? Entonces, ¿cómo queda? A ver, ¿me la dicen? After finishing brainstorming, it is essential to discard ideas that are not feasible. Ok, after finishing brainstorming. Ok. Vaya, vamos a ver, y etcétera, etcétera. Vamos a ver acá, before. Esta es la, la adverbial, ¿verdad? Y está al inicio. Ok, aquí está el adverbio. Before, who, the manager. Oh, that's the subject, right? Listed, mm, el tiempo pasado. Ya ven que no importa el tiempo, se puede o no se puede hacer dependiendo de los sujetos nada más. Ok, vamos a ver. Before the manager listed the witnesses of the company on a slide, ah, he had presented new products to, the, to help the company increase sales. Vamos a ver cómo podríamos hacer esta ya reducida. Before listening the witness. Uh, excuse me? Before listening the witnesses. Ok, este es listed, no es listen. Este es listed. Ajá, entonces el verbo. Listing. Listing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Before listing the witnesses. The witnesses. Ajá. Etcétera, on a slide, ¿verdad? of the company on a slide, uh -huh. porque definimos que el sujeto es the manager, the verb is listed, entonces ya lo hice ing, ya eliminé el sujeto y ahora voy, the witnesses, oh, todo el complemento, ¿verdad? On a slide, then I write a comma because we have the other sentence that starts over here and it says he had presented another action right presented new products etc etc ustedes sí escriban lo completo verdad la teacher lo está haciendo así pero porque queremos seguirlos todos pero ustedes escriban lo completo es necesario que su cerebro grabe esas palabras ok vamos a la siguiente the next one says andrew get Text messaging while he was in a video conference about the prototype for the new product. Ok, definamos. ¿Cuál es la cláusula? Acá. De while, while, while he was. While. Ok. Uh -huh, uh -huh. While he was. Y en la primera, que es la independiente, Andrew kept text messaging. Ajá, esa es la independiente. Entonces, ¿quién es el sujeto? Who is the subject? Andrew. 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 Is the same subject in the adverbial clause? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is, right? Mm -hmm. Why? It's him. So, we're going to say, yes, it's possible. So, we're going to reduce this in this way. Mm -hmm. Andrew kept text messaging Aha. while a ver, ¿qué hacemos para convertirlo en frase? We eliminate the subject. What's the subject in the, in the adverbial clause? He, right? He. Eliminated. Then, cualquier forma de be. Eliminar. Eliminated. Okay. Ajá. Uh -huh. Then, ¿qué nos quedaría? 
a video conference. Yes, correct. Conference about a prototype, etc. Ya ven que era más fácil de lo que se veía. Yes. Sí se comprende, ¿verdad? Marles. Marles. <laughs> okay. Va, para ver si se comprende, hagamos la cuatro. Hagan la cuatro ustedes solitos y me la van diciendo de una sola vez. Ajá. ¿Se puede o no se puede? Examinemos la primero. ¿Dónde está la cláusula adverbial? Identifiquémosla. After they found the problem. Correct. Ajá. They, ¿verdad? Y entonces en la otra, ¿cuál será la, el sujeto? ¿Es siempre they o quién? ¿O quién será? Yes. Promising product. Promising product ideas. Product ideas. Ok, entonces sí es la, el mismo, ¿verdad? Sí. Ajá. Ok, es el mismo sujeto. Entonces, vamos a decir completo lo primero. Many prom promising product ideas are ruled out after, after what? We eliminate the subject and if it is a different verb, Yes, after failing to produce positive results in the SWOT analysis. Yay, we did it. Number five. The weakness of the, the, weakness of the company can be trampled up there. Careful. The weakness of the company can be. How do you say that word and what is the meaning? Uh, what what yeah. alleviate alleviate uh -huh. alleviate aliviar alleviate mm -hmm. yeah. the weaknesses of the company the weaknesses of a company can be transformed into opportunities ah esa es una verdad y luego, ¿cuál sigue? La frase, la, perdón, la cláusula adverbial. ¿Cuál es la cláusula adverbial? After, After a careful contingency. Contingency plan. Ok, ajá. Bye. ¿Es el mismo sujeto o no es el mismo sujeto? No. No, right. So, no. we cannot reduce this one. We cannot reduce number five. Let's talk about the one of Starbucks. No, Starbucks is a different thing here. Before you present a new idea, de que este es un video, este es un video muy bueno que lo vamos a, a, a ver después, pero dice, before you present a new idea to whom? The manager. The manager. Pero quién es el sujeto? The new idea. You. Oh, you. Uh -huh. you. Uh -huh. uh, y veamos en la siguiente. You need to press it. Okay, then we can reduce it, right? Before presenting a new idea to the manager, you need to present a detailed list. Before presenting a new idea. No, before presenting, okay? Ting, with the ING. Acordémonos que tenemos que hacer este un ING. Entonces, volvemos que después de un adverbio como before, como after, si vamos a tener un verbo después de esas palabras, va a ir con ing, ¿ok? Como un gerund, ¿verdad? Bueno, ¿estamos bien hasta aquí? Eh, yo tengo una duda con el, con el ejemplo número tres. Ok, I'm sorry. Ajá, uh -huh. number three, it says Andrew kept, ajá, uh -huh. tell me. Eh, ¿Dónde estaba el verbo en ING después del adverb clause? 
Ah, es que lo que pasa es que ahí hay un verbo be y decimos, uh -huh. la regla dice que todo, cualquier forma del verbo be se elimina y se pasa directamente a lo que continúa, ¿verdad? Al okay. objeto directo en este caso, porque sería en a video conference. Entonces, ahí no necesitamos el verbo, simple y sencillamente, while in a video. Ah, ¿Mm? oh, ok, gracias. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bien, is there any other question? Are we okay so far? Chévere, sí, ¿verdad? Yes, yeah. and we need to practice. Más o menos. <laughs> Okay, uh -huh. we will practice tomorrow. Uh, I have a worksheet aquí, pero es algo larga y ya son las 10. Así que eh, la vamos a hacer mañana al iniciar la clase para que... Okay. Y también ustedes ahí en, en la plataforma eh, ya tengo posteado una actividad, ¿verdad? Ya creo que alguien ya hizo un comentario por ahí, si no me equivoco. Ah, no, solo el mío está. No, hombre, ustedes, qué barbaridad. Ah. <ríe> Miren, en la plataforma ustedes tienen todo el tiempo para practicar 24-7, ¿verdad? Si usted va a almorzar, yo les sugiero que para, allá, para este módulo usted disponga un poquito más. Esto es de leer mucho para adquirir vocabulario. Es de hablar mucho para practicar pronunciación y definiciones, conceptos, new, new vocabulary. Entonces, eh, ahí está posteado ese video. Eh, algunos de ustedes creo que ya hicieron las oraciones, ¿verdad? Las oraciones ya son las 10 y 2, pero igual les voy a presentar esto como más o menos son las oraciones. ¿sí? ¿Alguien vio ya el video? No. Muy bien, jóvenes, muy, muy bien. bien. Eh, los felicito. No, hombre, son bromas. Just joking, just joking. Ok, ajá. Bueno, es para motivar los jóvenes, es para motivarlos. Miren, cuando tengan un su chancecito, se van a divertir con ese video un poquito. Y si al momento de verlo, ustedes eh, les despierta la curiosidad de dónde viene la historia de esa Ana que aparece en el video, pueden ir a ver toda la serie. Es una serie buenísima de inglés para el trabajo. Entonces, ahí ustedes pueden ir aprendiendo el, o practicando el vocabulario que ya vieron, ¿ok? Desde el 1 hasta el 6. Así que hasta el intermedio 1. Entonces, eh, nos quedamos hasta ahí. Voy a pasar lista rapidito. Solo voy a ir diciendo el nombre y dicen present, 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 ¿ok? So, there we go. Hoy se salvaron. Ya no van a decir algo, ¿verdad? Ana Lorena Lovato Orellana. Present. Ok, Blanca Jennifer Torres de Martínez, Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martínez, Present. Carlos Eduardo Torres Durán, Present. Carlos Ernesto Hernández Cepeda, Present. Carlos Francisco Arias Sánchez, Cristina Edith Ramos Ríos, Present. Edwin Antonio Quintero Sumaña, Eulice Torres Torres, Present. Fátima Present. Noemi Umaña Castro, Glenda Josefina Toledo Leiva. Present. José Salvador Bernal Quintanilla. Josmana Tilio Serrano. Present. Karen Nisset Sánchez Castro. Nancy Margarita Morán Morán. Present. Nelson Alberto Peraza Mejía. Present. Rafael Alexander Serna Díaz. Mr. Rafael teacher. se nos quedó un poco calladito hoy. Vamos a ver. Raúl Ernesto González. Present. Rosa del Carmen Enríquez Flores. Present. Wilber Alberto Pérez Méndez. José Miguel Torres Hernández. Present. Ok, people, ahorita si se quiere quedar conmigo con todo gusto, el tiempo es para Carlos Eduardo, perdón, Carlos Alberto Domínguez Martínez. Carlos Alberto quiere quedarse conmigo el día de hoy, creo que van a ver tamalitos pisques. Vamos a ver. Oh. Ok. No. Sí, va, acepta los con salsa o sin salsa. Ok, people, have a very good night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye. Do your homework. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Oh.
como un mes y medio aproximadamente. Le prometí a mamá Pero que te puedes encontrar Ha estado muy emocionada desde que te fuiste Ok, Carlos Alberto Tell me, how can I assist you today? Um, in English? Yes, please <laughs> <laughs> Uh, repeat the, the question, teacher. How can I assist you today? En qué yo puedo ser de utilidad? Okay. Uh, pues, uh, uh, the, the, the big problem is uh, the pronunciation. Uh, in, okay. For me, it's very important to practice uh, speaking English in the classroom and in my job and with my family. My brother, my brother is a, a, a licenciatura. How do you say licenciatura? Okay, a bachelor. A bachelor and in English. Okay. Okay. It, uh, the big problem is a uh, pronunciation. Oh yeah. I think that's the the um, a, the most difficult part that every student faces. I think that if someone gives you everything done, it's easier to understand, right? Uh, to read, you can read, you can write, you can text message, you can read anything, you can listen and watch movies in English, but at the time that you want to speak, oh, that's the stop, right? A la hora que usted quiere hablar, ahí viene la detención. Ok, va, mire, con esa cosa, con esa, perdón, con esa dificultad, gracias a Dios que ya la detectó, lo que hay que hacer, sinceramente, no queda otra más que imitar, imite. Imite usted, póngase a repetir, no hay okay. de otra manera. A veces dice, es que sabe que nos ha afectado mucho el concepto de que hay muchas escuelas ahora que le dicen, ah, esa es repetir y repetir es como loros. No, ¿y cómo aprende a hablar el oro? ¿Verdad? Um, Aunque no entendió, pero lo dijo. El oro, el oro no, no, no sabe el significado de la cosa, pero sabe decirlo. Entonces, eh, el asunto acá es que usted ya conoce el significado ahora, sabe leerlo, sabe escribirlo, sabe escucharlo. Entonces, lo que le hace falta es imitarlo, ¿ok? Y esa es la parte que debe quitarse toda pena y toda pereza, porque a veces ya el cansancio a veces nos lleva, ¿verdad? O la pena. La pena de que van a decir, ay, me equivoqué, van a decir que no me entienden. Bueno, aunque sea con señas, pero hay que terminar de, de darnos a entender. Y la forma de imitar que yo le puedo decir y que funciona es que precisamente lo que usted ya sabe, lo repita. Por ejemplo, ah, okay. usted ya sabe que una oración lleva un sujeto, un verbo y un complemento, arme sus ideas de esa manera. Por ejemplo, usted ahorita está ahí sentado. Bueno, usted puede decir, ¿quién está sentado? ¿Verdad? Pensamos, I, hmm. pero en este momento, this moment, I am sitting. ¿Ok? Ah, ya lo puedo decir. ¿Sí? Y así, porque yo ya lo he escuchado, que así me dicen que, o oh, yo sé que así se dice. Entonces lo voy a decir. Hay que soltar. Esas palabras que ya conocemos. Entonces, no, okay. Lo mejor es imitar eh, de esa manera lo que ya sabemos. Y de alguna forma yo le podría decir que si va a ver videos, yo le puedo decir, ah, vea videos. Es una buena estrategia. Pero hay que ver videos que realmente me van a servir. Dice uno, sí. Las cosas que me van a servir son las cosas que yo ya aprendí pero que no las puedo expresar. Entonces, tengo que regresar a esas mismas cosas 
para mm. poder imitarlas nuevamente y que se me vayan quedando y vayan desarrollándose en mi pronunciación, en mi forma de hablar, en expresar mis emociones, porque a veces podemos leer en voz alta, pero no le ponemos entonación, no le ponemos emoción, entonces necesitamos que imitar, imitar. Una de las okay. cosas, ¿sabe cuál es? Usted se puede poner a, a ver una película en inglés, only English, sin subtítulos, porque usted más o menos conoce ya el vocabulario, ¿verdad? Ya la ha visto en español antes. Entonces usted la pone toda en inglés y comienza. Escucha, lo que usted escucha, lo repite. Lo que usted escucha, lo repite. Y así, poco a poco, usted va a ir adquiriendo la habilidad de hablarlo, ¿verdad? Porque solo eso le falta, sinceramente. Solo destrabar, ¿verdad? La idea. Ok. Ok. Ok, teacher. Y ahorita okay. en la clase, ¿cómo se ha sentido? Pues bastante bien, la verdad que este no, no se sienten las dos horas. Ve que se van ah. rápido. Ajá. Sí, entonces, eso es lo bueno porque, verdad, este no se sienten las dos horas y, y la clase no parece muy cansada. Ajá. Y usted Ajá. Este, estudió con nosotros desde qué nivel? ¿Desde el 1? Sí, desde el inicio. Ah, qué chévere. Ok, that's nice. That's nice. Entonces, sí, lo que falta es imitar, imitar, okay. porque el conocimiento ya lo tiene. Y una de las cosas que puede hacer también, regresar a las clases que a usted le hayan quedado un poco faltos, ¿verdad? Como usted tiene acceso, vaya y regrese a esa clase y vea, mira, repítalo. Use esa, esa herramienta, los videos de las clases ayudan un okay. montón. Regresar a los manuales de antes también ayuda un montón, ¿verdad? Porque ya si busco algo que yo no he aprendido, tengo que aprenderlo primero para poder decirlo. En cambio, algo que yo ya sé qué significa, ya va a ser más fácil moldearlo, ¿verdad? Eh, a la forma de decirlo, ¿ok? Ah, ok, teacher. Ok, perfecto. Ok, Carlos Alberto, it has been a pleasure. So, if you have no more questions, we'll see you tomorrow, ok? Ok, teacher. Ok, then, have a very good night. Have a very good night, teacher. Bye, bye.